welcome back. So um, we're going to stick with the race and I'm going to talk through as well some of the things that we learned about the for loop, which is really important. So um, we should know by now that the initialization, so and basically if you think of it like this, this is the initial value of a counter is zero for the for loop here. Now the structure of the for loop is this is your initialization. The next is your loop continuation control. So this is your loop continuation. What happens to make it keep going? And then this counter is your incrementation. So how many times is it going to go? Um, is based on this and then um, it basically increments so it, it reassigns counter continuous times. So I just want to remind you that counter plus plus is, is the same as writing counter equals counter plus one and it assigns it every time so it stores it and then once it goes around again it stores it again and once it goes around again it stores it again and because it starts from zero and is less than the array length it's going from the index so it's saying zero to nine okay for the index values and then assigning the value based on the index and that's how you access the <laughs> store the values within an array and an array is an object so we already know this already and then we said that um, it knows its own length so you can use things like dot length to access um, different things within within an object so the dot operator allows you to access uh, different things so we already know that accessing um, class name dot method is how we access methods within within an object or within a new object of a class. So, for instance, I keep going back to examples that we covered before. If we were to create an account, it would be account with a capital A because the class starts with a capital A. Within our class that we're creating a new object, we refer to it as whatever we want. But usually, the naming convention is a lowercase a. Um, for account and then equals new for a new object and then capital A for account open bracket close bracket now if there are different constructors or if you needed different things within that object or if it, if if you could call if you could make a new object based on different parameters then you'd have different things within that um, open bracket and close bracket round brackets there for a new um, array, we always use the open, open and close square bracket, the type, so in this instance it's going to be an int type and then array is a lowercase a but I can call it whatever I want. This is, I uh, keep emphasizing this because it's really important. Um, usually naming conventions are extremely important for other people to read your code. So when you're looking at different things like this, you have a lowercase a for array. If I was using a large program, I obviously wouldn't call it just array. I'd call it based on whatever it was using or wherever it was going or um, what task it was performing. So because this is a small program, we're just using array, but um, naming conventions within different programs are, are different. Um, some people like to just use a, a lowercase of the same of the name and then others like to um, do what's called camel casing. So you have lowercase and then uppercase for the next letter and then uppercase for the next letter after that and so on and so forth. Now within the for loop we already know that within methods that it's last in first out. That is a data structure. You have your um, stack frame with your return address or what's also called an, an activation record at the top and it's pushed on and popped off and the memory then goes away after the return is returned. For a for loop, once the for loop is finished, that is also gone away. <laughs> so the counter is only used within 
the realm of the for loop and the same here and that's why you can call it counter here again you don't need to to call it you can call it whatever you want I can call it XYZ as long as I'm consistent when I'm using it and I can use it all across here as XYZ for readability purposes obviously I want to call it counter because we know that it's a, it's counting through each loop that's why I'm calling it counter and we also know that um, it's assigning each of the values based on the index 0 to 9. So if I was to rewrite counter plus plus, that is counter equals counter plus 1. I could write this section here of the for loop as this if I wanted to. Counter plus plus is just an easier way to write it. I just want to remind you of this. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at a bar chart <laughs> and how that's done. So we have um, a combination of what we've covered so far. We have an initializer list specifying the initial value for each um, element. Now, when you um, define an array, you can't modify <laughs> um, if it's defined up here and when you're compiled, when if it's already compiled, you can't modify it when it's compiled. So there are different things, uh, different instances when you can um, iterate through and assign different values to an array and swap in and out values. But we'll come to that afterwards. For the moment, just stick with this. So we have a bar chart here with an initializer list. Again, we do not use the new keyword with this. We just have a comma separated list with an open and close curly bracket and a semicolon and that's basically saying I want this amount of elements in this array. This array already knows its length so we don't need to specify it. In the other format we would have done um, basically equals new int and then put in the number here. We already know that this is another way to do it but we're not doing it that way because we already know the values so we have um, a set amount here we have our for counter which has our initialization our loop continuation control and our incrementation and that's how you're writing how you write our for loop so we have our initialization which is at zero and then array dot length because it has to be less than otherwise it's going to get an out of bounds exception and a counter plus plus and then we have an if statement here an if else statement so if counter is equal to and two equals is not an assignment two equals is a comparison so if the counter is actually equal to 10 then print this else print this and then we're going to multiply counter by 10 um, and assign it to the first um, where the first placeholder is where the percentage 0 to D is and that's multiplying it by 10 and then the next one is going to counter multiply by 10 plus 9 okay and then we're going to print a new line so when I run this you can see the list here 0 0 to 0 9 and so on and so forth now if I took away this print line and it's a really good idea to go through code like this if you remove a line and see what it does then this happens so it doesn't it doesn't have a line because the new line is within the for loop it does it each time <laughs> within the for loop so I could easily also put that up here as well if I wanted to and press play here and you can see that it does it also has here a new line underneath because it's doing it before the if statement so we're going to put it back to where it was so and we are going to say if counter is equal to 10 
equal to is a kind of tricky way to say it because in the English language we could say equal to but actually in programming it's a comparison of uh, counters equal to 10 but when you're um, saying int counter equals 10 equals zero in the for loop it actually means assignment to <laughs> to zero the initial value is zero um so it's a, a little bit tricky to uh navigate through some of the stuff as well <laughs> so if we press play again then there's no there's no line there's no blank line here because we did it after the if statement so placing code in particular places also impacts how it's run um, as well. So we want the new line after after the um, loop. And then here we can do our calculations within our, our system out printf statement as well. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please send them to learncomputerswithali at gmail.com. We'll be happy to answer them. And please subscribe to my channel. Um, and that's it for today. Thanks a million.